time. Let's pray. Father, yes. thank you. Thank you, yes. Lord, for this day. Thank, thank you, Father. Father. It's the day you have made. We rejoice and are glad in this day, Father. We were so glad when they said, let's go into the house of the Lord and, and, and gather in your name to worship and fellowship today. Uh, today, and, and we pray that the worship that we gave you was touching to your heart, Father. And as we uh, transition in the service from giving to receiving, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to open our ears and our eyes to see and hear the word today. That whatever is trying to block or hinder has to go right now in the name of Jesus. I declare the seed of the word will be planted into good soil. Yes. Good soil. And it shall produce fruit in the name of Jesus. I pray over Pastor Amanda and myself. I declare we have the mind of Christ. Our tongues are anointed to declare your word. We'll do it with boldness, yes. power, authority. But most importantly, rooted and grounded in love. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, bud. Mm -hmm. So last week, uh, we've been discussing, last few weeks, we've actually been discussing a little bit about uh, living in Christ. You know that? Yeah. How many were here last week? Yeah, uh, a couple of you. A couple of you. I know you were here and you didn't raise your hand. <laughs> we have a problem. <laughs> Houston, there's a problem. <laughs> you didn't know where you were. <laughs> but we've been talking about living in Christ, yes. right? And then last week, we kind of talked about allowing uh, God to develop in us, uh, in, in his image and his likeness. How many remember that? Yeah. And, and here's the good news. If, if you don't remember, go to YouTube. Hit yes. at Connect uh, Opelika, and it'll come up with our page. And every week after the service, they're loading the edited version of this. So it has just the preaching that you can go on there and, and listen. And, and so it wouldn't even hurt... To go back before the this this service, and uh, so there you go. So we're we're online right there. You can go back before the next service and kind of catch up. So have a refresher. So when we come in, it'll be right there, and, and I believe you'll get more out of it. So encourage you to go and, and to subscribe to that. Get notifications when it comes out, and share the gospel with your friends. Um, I I do. I know it's it's me on there and Pastor Amanda. Yes. But I asked coworkers to listen to it. I was like, man, God gave a good word this weekend, and uh, I hope you'll listen to it. And I'm, I'm hearing good reports of that. So yeah. use that. So if you, if you don't remember, there's a good way to say, let me catch up so make sure I can get everything fresh for Sunday. Uh, but so we've been talking about living in Christ yes. and allowing God to develop in us things that will reflect in his image and his likeness. Yes. Okay. Uh, if you have your Bibles, Romans chapter 6, Romans 6. And let's start in verse number 8, Romans 6, 8. It says, now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live in him. Say live in him. Live in him. So who did we die with? Christ. All right. And who do we live in? Christ. All right. So hold your finger there. Flip over to Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. And I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith. Faith in what? In the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes. What a scripture, right? Yes. So this, this statement that is made here, I want to just kind of look at that. The statement here, it says, I no longer live. Yes. But Christ lives in in me. That statement right there is, is something I kind of been focusing on right. and digging into. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And th this is something that, that I want you to understand. A new life cannot come with, without the dead of the old one. New life cannot come without the death of the old life. Do you agree? Right. right. And so... When he says to take up your cross daily, that means every day you have to choose to die to self mm -hmm. so that Christ can live that day in you. Yes, we are born again and we have a new life in Christ, but this flesh still lives and will continue to live until our last breath, right? That's right. So we have to continually take up our cross daily so that Christ can live. That's right. So we, we have to crucify our flesh. Yes. All right. So being crucified with Christ means that I have 
nailed my old nature to the cross. Yes. And what that means is I now live a sacrificed life. Say sacrificed life. Not a religious life. No, no. Because we can live a religious life and still live a self-filled life. Yeah, that's, that's true. This is not about the works that I do. No. God looks at the intent of the heart and everything that we true. do. If we're doing these works for our pleasure, our gain, and our penance, then that's wrong. Really, what we're doing is we're using manipulation to get God to do what we want him to do. Right. And we're, human beings are bad about that. Yes. that we'll do good to somebody to manipulate them so we get something in re return. Mm -hmm. And see, we can't manipulate God because he sees our heart, our motive, and our intent. Yes. Right? So even though we may try to get through life with manipulations, there's one relationship you cannot manipulate. And that's the one with God. Yes. All right? So when we crucify our flesh, it is really an act of surrender. It's an mm. act of sacrifice. And that sacrifice is not to manipulate, but to honor. Yes. So when, when I'm sacrificing my flesh, it is to honor God. Yes. And not to try to manipulate God. Yes. Good point. Valid point that you brought there. So we live a sacrificed life, Right. And I think there's scripture that says that we should be a living sacrifice. Oh, yes, yes. And, and so it does, it does align with the Bible. Uh, our life after receiving Christ, this new life, requires the death of the old one. Yes. Okay? And so let's go back to Romans 6 now. We were in verse 8. Let's jump down to verse 11. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive in God, in Christ Jesus. Verse 12, therefore, do not let sin reign. Mm. I underline that in my Bible. Do not let sin reign in your mortal body, but that you obey, so that you obey. I put underlined obey, it's evil desires. Mm. Verse 13 do not offer, I underline that, do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. Mm. So I underlined a couple things in here. I, yes. I call them action statements, okay? Um, I, I did underline dead to sin but alive in God because it confirms what we're talking about. We died with Christ, therefore we live in Christ. Yes. Right? So we, we're die, we've died to sin, So, but then it goes on, and I want you to see that it's just not a one-time thing saying that sin never tries to pop back up in our life. Mm. We've died to sin means we've died to the control of sin. Yeah. We've died, we've died to the master of sin. Mm -hmm. We now have a new Lord in the new life, and that, that Lord is Jesus. Sin no longer masters us. I'm no longer a slave to sin. Do you get that? Yeah. I'm no longer a slave to sin. Before Christ, I was no, no option but enslaved to sin, to my flesh, to whatever it desired. I tried to fight it, but it would still come out. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. But after Christ, the new life, I have a new master, a new Lord. Say new Lord. A new Lord. And his name is Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. So then in this verse 12, it says, Therefore, do not let sin reign. I mean, you know, this is after it told you you're dead to sin and alive in God. Am I reading this right? Yeah. I believe 12 comes before, I mean, after 11. Mm -hmm. And 11 says, die to sin, but live in God. 12 says, therefore. Therefore means what? You have a choice. You have a choice. Yes. Okay. So we have to look at therefore. That means something happened before. Mm -hmm. So therefore it happened. So what was therefore? Dead to sin, but alive in Christ. Therefore, do not let sin reign. So there's a choice of who's going to reign in your life even yes. after you're dead with Christ and live in Him. Yes. Do you see this? Yes. Let me see it. Okay? But see, some, some theologians in some way that they're preaching right now contradicts this 
because they don't like accountability. Mm -hmm. They like to live in a quote-unquote grace that permits sinful behavior without consequence. Mm. And there's no such thing. Say no such thing. No such thing. It is, it is a trick of the enemy, a misinterpretation of the Bible. Does that sound familiar? That's exactly what the devil did to Adam and Eve. It's exactly what he attempted to do to Christ, was take the word and manipulate it in a way that it would be self-preserving and self-promoting. Yes. Both of them were self-promoting what he did to Christ and also what he did to Eve. Yeah. And he was continuing to do that, and some people have fallen for it. Thank God for grace, or we'd all be dead, right? But grace is not so that we can take advantage of a liberty mm. to continue in the old nature. Remember, we, we're crucified with Christ. Mm. Say crucified. Crucified. All right? So that we now live in him. So we have a new master. We don't have to live under the slave of sin. Jesus didn't come to die for us so that we would no longer uh, uh, live in, I mean, just continue to live in sin. Yes. He came to give us the conquering ability to conquer sin. Right? So do not let sin reign where? In your mortal body. So that you obey its evil desires. Obedience. Mm -hmm. Right? Obey. That means you have submitted to it. Yeah. Obedience doesn't happen without submission. That's right. When you obey something, you submit to the authority of something, the control of something, and the lordship of something. So here's an action word on us that we choose who we obey. Yeah. We choose who we submit to. We choose who we give the authority to. Do you see this is after mm -hmm. accepting Christ as, in our life as our Savior? Do you see this? Choices we make. Again, don't think heaven or hell. We're not talking about losing salvation. We're not talking about not getting into heaven. That's all you want to do in a religious mindset. We've got to stop token living. Yes. And we're living out of these tokens. Is my token going to be taken away from me? Well, where's your heart aligned in the first place? If, if you think your token <laughs> can be taken away from you, your faith is already not where it needs to be. That's right. Hello? Yeah. Your heart is totally out of line. Yes. And we, there's some deeper things to address. Yes. That we have to do, right? But who we obey, don't let sin. So who, who doesn't let sin? We. We do. Yeah. Say it's a choice. Whose choice is it? Now, here's the good news. He empowers us to make the right choices. Where before it was confusing, now we can have clarity. Where before temptation was so overwhelming, now we have the power to resist. Hmm. Yeah. Right? Right. So that's the difference. The difference is before Jesus, you didn't have the power to resist. But now, say now, and now, new life, new life. I have the power to resist. To resist. Amen. I Amen. hope you believe what you just said. And I underline, do not offer. That seems like it's a submission. Submission, yeah. We're giving something away. Yeah. Do not offer yourself to sin. Hmm. So the devil doesn't make you sin. No. You, choose, you offer yourself to it. Offering is a sacrifice. And it can be as little as a peak. That's it. A little as a peak, just a tinge. Uh -huh. Offering is a sacrifice. Right. And I've asked this question before, who are we sacrificing for? Mm -hmm. That means who am I giving honor to? To my sinful nature or to the spirit nature? Yeah. And we have that choice. Mm -hmm. Either way, we're making an offering. We're either sacrificing our spirit or sacrificing our flesh. You see that? There, I can't have both. 
So when I make these choices, I'm choosing to sacrifice, to give up godly behavior. I'm sacrificing it to my sinful nature. Mm -hmm. Now, when I'm doing, when I'm sacrificing my sinful nature for God, I see I'm taking it and I'm sacrificing it to Him. Mm -hmm. Well, who's the Lord of the sinful nature? And who's the Lord of the godly nature? That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you, I, I'm going to shock you with this. Some of us need to get out of devil worship. Mm -hmm. We need to stop offering sacrifices to the sinful nature. We need to stop giving up our right, our, our right standing to the sinful nature. Say it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to happen. Amen? Do you see, do you see the severity of this? The, can you, the, the biggest trick of the enemy is, I heard this from a minister, the biggest trick of the enemy is, is to believe he doesn't exist. Yes. Right? Because yeah. you'll never resist what you don't believe exists. That's right. And the biggest trick of the enemy inside of the church is, is for us to not believe how serious God is about his kingdom, his principles that we should be following. Yeah. Right? And it's a trick of the enemy. This is serious. And if he can come in and show that there's no seriousness to it, then he's tricking us. That's right. That's what the devil does. You know, he's a trickster. Have you ever, have you ever heard the wilds of the devil? Oh, yeah. It's in the Bible. You know what the wilds means? The tricking, the cunning behavior. Yeah. The tricking, cunning behavior of the devil to deceive the believer. That's what he's trying to do with these darts that he throws at us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're darts to deceive the believer to have faith or sacrifice something opposite of what God intended. Amen. Yeah. Say no more. No more. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit. That's right. We have the Word of God. Amen? Get in the Word, have the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, and you'll never be fooled. Yeah. Say never. Never. So, do not offer yourself to sin, but rather offer yourself to God. See the two sacrifices there? Offer every part of yourself to Him as instruments of righteousness. Amen. So living in Christ is not a lifestyle of being free to sin. It is a lifestyle of being freed from sin. See, one thought enables sin, and the other empowers us to conquer sin. Now, I was reading uh, Ephesians 4, and it came, same thing, but it gave it a different perspective, a okay. different look. Uh, and I like how Paul says it here in the Amplified, starting in verse 17. So this I say and solemnly affirm together with the Lord as in his presence. What does that mean? He got a word from God. Mm -hmm. Okay? That you must no longer live as the unbelieving Gentiles live. Hmm. Talking to the church. Yeah. He's talking okay? to us. In the futility of their minds and in the foolishness and emptiness of their souls. Hmm. So, so, so how do we live? Read that again. That's yeah. good. That's good. So it's in the futility of their minds and in the foolishness and emptiness of their souls. Mm. For their moral understanding is darkened and their reasoning is clouded. Mm. Deceived. Yeah, that's okay? deception. They are alienated and self-banished from the life of God. Oh, 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 oh. Self-banished. They, yeah, they are self-banished. So God didn't banish them. No. They're self-banished. Right. Their choices. Right. Ooh, that's good. With no share in it because of the willful ignorance and spiritual blindness that is deep-seated within them. That means they're stubborn. Willful. Willfully. Hmm. Hard-hearted. Because of the hardness and insensitivity of their heart. And they, the ungodly, in their spiritual apathy, that well, means the conviction this. is there, but yeah. they, you know what? It's okay because God's going to let me do what I want to do anyways. Mm -hmm. Having become calloused and unfeeling, mm. have given themselves over as prey to the unbridled sensuality, eagerly craving the practice of every kind of impurity that their desires may demand. But here's the kicker. But you did not learn Christ in that way. You didn't learn it from Jesus. Christ, you didn't learn Christ that way. Christ mm. doesn't give you permission to do that. But you know, 
couple of things that you said in there. You, you mind and thoughts, right? Soul, giving yourself over as prey, sensuality yes. and desires. Yeah, right. Impurity that desires may demand. Right. Each right. one of these, though. Right. We're talking about the soul of man, mm -hmm. the mind, will, and emotion. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. So the battleground, again, even that points out is where, where is our battle at? Right. In the soul. Right. right? We're not battling against flesh and blood. No, it's That's spiritually, true. but right. it is our soul, soul is the gateway right. to the spirit. Right. So the only influence the devil has to a human being is, is your soulish nature. Right? Right. That's the only influence. He can't come to, and take your spirit. Just, you know, yeah. that's, that's not it. He's fighting here. Right. He has no authority. Right. Other than the authority we give him. Yes. That's why I was talking about offer. Yes. Give up. Do not yes. give up. It's saying don't allow your authority be succumbed to him. Mm hmm The only authority the devil has in your life is the authority you give him. Period. I mean, you see this. Amen. I want you to see that you're more than a conqueror. Right. I want you to see that living in Christ means that Christ's likeness lives in me. What is Christ's likeness? Not only am I a servant, yeah. but I'm a powerful son or daughter. Huh? Yeah. That he empowered us to go ye into all the world. Yeah. Huh? To preach the gospel. That's the ministry of reconciliation. And along with that, what? Laying hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yes. Huh? Casting out the devils and they got to go. That nothing that tries to harm you will prosper. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But we have to ensure that we are doing as we are called or told to do. Our actions must match our confession. There you go. Yep. There you go. Being like Christ is more than what we, we have saw, seen in the past. Yes. Right? Yeah. Ah, good stuff. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a question. That, and, and man, when I wrote this, I just really had to just sit back and mm. think about it. Yeah. Right? It's a, it's a why... Has the gospel been minimized to a moment of acceptance instead of a lifestyle of repentance? Why mm -hmm. has the gospel been minimized to a moment of acceptance instead of a lifestyle of repentance? And that struck me hard today. The simple truth of why is because of self-centered theology. Mm -hmm. It has become popular once again. This is not something that's new. No. Self-centered theology tried to enter into the church almost immediately after it was, it was born. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, the gospel has been quote-unquote simplified I think it has been censored to appeal to people's soulish ways and desires. Yeah. We are in an age of a censored gospel. A gospel that is being preached from pulpits that is censored out righteous living, holy living, mm -hmm. repentance. Hello? Godliness, holiness is all gone because it's censored out to appeal to the ear of the listener. See, the thought of censorship or censoring the gospel is so it'll attract to the world is a man-made man way of drawing people instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to do the work. We have got a gospel that's coming forth across pulpits, across our nation, across the world that we have influenced. I believe the Church of America has influenced a lot of churches even around the world. We're a great influencer. Mm -hmm. But we have to be careful what we're influencing. The same thing of influencing positive, negative can be influenced as well. Amen. But we have got a gospel that's going forth that has been censored to living a life like Christ. Dying in Christ, so that we live in Christ. Yes. And we have got to ensure that we stand up for righteousness and truth. That we don't succumb ourselves to a self-centered theology. And it won't be popular. 
No. It won't be the one that everybody wants to, not yet. But this is the same thing that happened back then. Not yet until God becomes holy again. That's right. The censorship of the gospel inside the church does not build the kingdom of God. No. Numbers gathering to the church does not mean the kingdom is being built. It means that church is being built. Yes. God didn't come to build your church. He came to build the kingdom. And a lot of people give homage and glory to the church, building, gathering, rather than glory to God and why we should be gathering. That's right. I have seen the church become an idol. Yes. The gathering become an idol. Mm Mm-hmm. To where we've lost meaning of why we even come together. To where it has become a social gospel. Social, not empowerment. It has become a social gospel, a networking availability. Yeah. To where we feel like we're accomplishing something, but we're not building the kingdom of God. Amen. Good works does not necessarily mean kingdom building. Charities are not necessarily kingdom-building events. So if we're basing on the effectiveness of charities given into a community on the kingdom being built, wrong. There are many charities that are not godly at all that give to help people in the community. Mm -hmm. And the church has to be more than a charity-giving organization. Mm -hmm. It needs to be a life-giving organization. Yes. A life-empowering organization. That's right. A life-changing organization. We can't look like the world and expect the world to change and have anything to do with it. Right. We have come to a place that mankind has tried to manipulate people to gather numbers to look like it's something that's of the kingdom instead of saying, Holy Spirit, you're the one that convicts. You're the one that draws. I'm not going to compromise the word for an ear. That's right. Because if I compromise the word for an ear, there might just be someone here, their heart needed to be changed that day. They needed true life to come that day. Amen. Amen. Man, it, it, it just irritates me so. And I'm passionate about it because I'm tired of my God being trying to be played and painted for something that He's not. I'm tired of my Jesus being downplayed of the sacrifice that He made for us. Mm -hmm. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Mm -hmm. And I won't stand for it either. Amen. The censorship of the gospel inside the church does not build the kingdom of God, but rather builds the house of man. Mm Mm-hmm. And that, my friend, is something that really hit me today is, is we need to stand against the building of the house of man. Yes. We have many temples that are being built as house of men, houses of men, rather than houses of God. Yeah. So many churches today are being built to exalt man rather than God. And as I was writing this down, something came to mind. It reminded me of a story in 1 Samuel. And I want to kind of just walk you through this story, 1 Samuel chapter 4. See, in this, in 1 Samuel chapter 4, it, it talks about the Ark of the Covenant was captured from the children of Israel. It was taken in battle by the Philistines. Yes, the very Ark of the Covenant, the most holy representation of God that dwelt amongst the people was captured by the enemy and taken away from them. See, I believe the Ark of the Covenant was taken away from the children of Israel because the priests of Israel were corrupt and they were filled with selfish, self-centered desires. See, the Ark of the Covenant was taken because of this. These priests were the sons of Eli. Eli was the high priest of Israel. And he had two sons that were there that were the priests inside of of, of Israel. It was a known fact that his sons were doing ungodly things while wearing the garments of priesthood. Yeah. I want you to get that fact. 
It was well known. Even Eli knew about it. Yeah. There's no way that he could he could hide from the fact of doing it. I mean, we're talking about a community that, mm -hmm. that you know, people going to gossip. But he had two boys that were living ungodly lives and doing ungodly behaviors while still wearing the garments of priesthood. Ooh. Sounds very familiar today. We should be wearing the garments of priesthood. Yeah. Today. Yes. But yet knowingly doing ungodly things and behaviors. 1 Peter 2 5 says, You believers, like living stones, are being built up in a spiritual house for a holy and dedicated priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable and pleasing to God through Jesus Christ. That's New where, Testament. Where, where's it at? 1 Peter 2 5. 1 Peter 2 5. Yep. I heard, I heard down. holy sacrifice. Holy sacrifice. You are being built up into a spiritual house uh -huh. for a holy and dedicated priesthood. A holy and dedicated what? Priesthood. Who is this talking to? Uh, us, believers. Us, the believers, right? The believers. This is the new life and born again believer yes. is talking about, correct? Yes, yeah. So here we have the priesthood in the Old Testament, and here we're referring to the priesthood in the New Testament. Right. A few verses down, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a special people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies, the wonderful deeds and virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into I, this marvelous I'm light. I'm thankful we are called the, the priesthood. We, are, right? the, the we holy, are the priesthood. Sometimes we focus on that because it builds our pride. Yes. But we have to understand that with the priesthood comes responsibility. Amen. Amen. With priesthood comes responsibility. I'm going to show you when you don't carry out the responsibility of priesthood, what happens? I'm going to show you right here in 1 Samuel. Go ahead. Right. So I, I want you to see this, and I want to, I'm going to show you something that God had revealed to me as I was reading this morning after okay. you had sent this. So go ahead and do that, and I'm going to show you something. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, we talked a little bit about this this right. morning. I was like, did you read the notes? Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you. This, this, I believe this is of God. How many will listen? How many have ears to hear? All right. So the priests were the sons of Eli. He was the high priest. And they, the sons were known for doing ungodly things while wearing the garments of priesthood. But Eli never addressed or dealt with it. And he allowed it to go on. See, the sins of the priesthood caused the glory of God to be removed from their midst. The sins of the priesthood allowed, say allowed, the glory of God Mm -hmm. to be removed from them. See, here it was literally that God's glory was with the ark and it was removed from them. Why? Because the priesthood was not counted as holy, was not taken with responsibility. See, one of these priests, his wife was pregnant. What happened is there was already a prophetic word that was going to happen that Eli's sons both were going to die. They were still in war. But one of his son's wife, his daughter-in-law, was pregnant and gave birth right after the capture of the ark and the death of her husband. Right after this, she gave birth, and the Bible says in her shame, she named her newborn son Ichabod. Let's look at it. 1 Samuel 4, 21 and 22. She named the boy Ichabod saying, listen to this, the glory has departed from Israel because of the capture of the ark of God and the deaths of her father-in-law and her husband. See, not only did the boys die, but Eli died as well. When he heard about the boys, it said that he fell back and when he fell, he landed on his neck and broke his neck and died. Mm -hmm. the house was cleared but the glory was gone even though it was cleared at that time it was cleared why? because the priesthood was not taken seriously 22 she said the glory has departed from Israel for the ark of God has been captured Question, has the same spirit of compromise and tolerance that Eli and his sons allowed returned to the church today? 
Hmm. Has the church compromised itself to the point that Ichabod is displayed at its doors? Has the glory of God left and the rituals of man remained? Okay. So, I, I do a lot of study and reading and spiritual warfare and things like that. It, you know, it, it's for us part of intercession. But as we do that, it's for intercession, right? It's for intercession. And so we have been praying in our corporate prayer for the spirit of Elijah to rise up. But in the same thing, when the spirit of Elijah rises up, the enemy's going to come, right? So what spirit comes? Jezebel. Jezebel. Yeah. Romans 2, not Romans, Revelations 2, verse 19. I know your deeds and your love and faith and surface and patient endurance that your last deeds are more numerous and greater than the first. Okay? Verse 20. But I have this charge against you, that you tolerate the woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. Priest. Priest. Prophetess. Claiming to be inspired and teaches and misleads my bond servants so they commit acts of sexual immorality and eat foods sacrificed to idols. Okay. What can that be? Anything can be an idol, right? Mm -hmm. Hold something about. What spirit was right there in the sons of Eli? Doesn't name it, but what spirit was active? The Jezebel spirit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was the Jezebel spirit. Some people think Jezebel is a, a woman and it just is a not. spirit it's of a, a woman. It's a spirit. It, it, it's it's It'll happen to anybody. It that happens spirit anywhere. doesn't discriminate. And it's, it's not something that was new in the times of Elijah. Demons are real, okay? Witchcraft is real. And the moment we don't think that it's real, we don't have the power to fight it, okay? We have to be careful when we don't allow authority to speak in our life. One of the attributes of Jezebel was that she would not submit to any other authority than her own. Mm. She had to be the authority. Dangerous. Dangerous. Yeah. Or the authority was on her terms. She set the terms. She, she set and she defined set the terms. The, she defined the terms, and not according to the word of God. Wow. So, a, so I have this charge against you that you tolerate this. Well, the same thing Eli did. Right. He tolerated, he tolerated it. it. He tolerated it. So what had happened? The glory of God was, glory of was God gone. Was gone. gone. The glory of God was gone. But here's the thing that we can watch for. What is something that sh it says? That the bond servants were given access and acts of sexual immorality. Less of the flesh. That's exactly what the priests of Eli, his sons, were doing. Yep. They were full of the lust of the flesh. They were full of However that. they wanted to eat. They ate the things that were supposed to be sacrificed to God, but they weren't eating it the proper way. They were wearing the garments of a priest, but it didn't hold the holiness of what a priest was supposed to be like. That's right. So a compromise came in, and the glory had departed from Israel. We don't want the glory to depart from the church. No. But what, had it, what needed to take place? They didn't find God as holy. God was not holy to them. So therefore, whatever I do, it doesn't make a difference. Because I'm still wearing the garments of a priest. And that's exactly what the church has done right now. That's it. I've accept, I know who Jesus is. That's it, yes. But they didn't take the garments of the priest. They, they didn't take it advantage of. That's right. And so what has done is Jezebel, the spirit of Jezebel, has come into the church mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and comprom allowed the compromise of the body. That's right. So if you really want the spirit of Elijah to rise up, you need the authority of the church. 
the pre the stand because it's it's through here the head to correct that Jezebel. Because who who was the one who killed Jezebel? Jehu the king. It wasn't Elijah the prophet who had to take authority. The head. The head. So Eli didn't take his proper position as head. As head. And it cost him. And it cost. Cost him his life and yes. it cost the glory of God. That's right. And it affected a nation. That's right. See, that's what sin does. Sin infects people around you. Right. It's not just going to affect you. It's going to infect others. Right. But here the glory of God was removed because the priesthood was worn without honor. Right. Yes. Without honor. Right. And holy regard to the Father. Yes. And that's a dangerous position that we are seeing in the church today. I've been talking about the compromise of the church for a while. Mm -hmm. But this stood out to me as more solid evidence of what we have been talking about. Biblically backing up and, and pinpointing this spirit that's behind this. So we now, we see and we can attack. Right? Because there's one thing in Revelation said, tolerance. Tolerance. That word, isn't that a, a very familiar word today? Is tolerance? Yes. Huh? Tolerance. We're talking about we got to tolerate this and tolerate that. But he's saying, I, only, I got one thing against you. It's mm. tolerance. Tolerance. Yes. Right? But see, tolerance is not just I love people the way they are. It's I accept what they do as okay. Yeah. As all right behavior. It's fine by me. And we've presented a gospel that God is, is saying that to others. What we presented a gospel is you can wear priestly garments and live like devils. And that's what we have presented. And that's why you see an absence of the glory of God in that church today. Period. So this was my prayer. Binding the spirit of Jezebel that has dug her nails into others for her own selfishness. I'll call them loosed and free. I'll call Jezebel be loosed to desire his honor above her own. No longer will the word be twisted to have a foothold of influence. Mm. And just like Elijah, I pray against Zoe, he did in turn. I will not run. I will not abandon the call and I will not give up the fight like Elijah did. Amen. I will stand in boldness. I will not run. I will not abandon the call. I will not give up the fight. Because I want it loosed. Amen. Amen. So I got a few things I wrote down. And I'm declaring over Connect Church. Are you That's ready? Right. I declare that Connect will not be Ichabod. Yes. But will be a house of the glory of God. Yes. I declare it in the name of Jesus. We will not submit to the nature of man. Amen. We will not allow the soul to lead. Yes. We are spirit-led and spirit-fed. Yes. We are in a lifestyle of surrender and repentance. Yes. We are a church that honors God and His Word. Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. We are a church that allows the Holy Spirit to have liberty and freedom. Yes. We are a church that will not compromise God's Word to appeal to the ear of people. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I declare it over Connect right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to say something and I want you to repeat it after me. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for the victory. To change. To change. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the power. To change. To change. Father. Father. Thank you for the understanding. Thank you for the understanding. Thank you for love. Thank you for love. And thank you for grace. And thank you for grace. To change. To change. Every one of those are given to you the power to change. Amen. Jesus gives you the victory to change. The Amen. Holy Spirit gives you the power to change. And God gives you the love and grace to change. Yes. Grace, power, victory. Amen. Say it with me. Grace. Grace. Power. Power. And victory. And victory. Come on. Grace. Grace. Power. power and and victory. victory. Grace. Grace. Power. power and and victory. victory. And I declare you have it in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. You have the grace 
the power and the victory Amen. to change. Amen. You don't have to be that old person any longer. You Amen. don't have to submit to your old ways any longer. Why? The grace, the power, and the victory. Amen. I've got Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Father has sent them to me to have victory here and now. Amen. Can we give God a hand clap of praise Amen. today? Amen.